And a very pleasant good evening and welcome to Ripview Stadium, the home of the North Nine Tigers, home of the Northview Cougars. Gil Anthony along with Mike Cutto on this a Friday evening. Could this be the last meeting between the two teams? We'll find out. We'll talk more about that as the game kicks off. The Dothan Nine Tigers lost the toss. However, interesting sideline. The Northview Cougars have elected to receive the kickoff back to receive the deep man. I think you got uh, number three back there, Derek Walker along with the uh, far man, that's Ward. And this is going to be a low kick, a dribbler down around the 20-yard line. Picked up the 20 by the Cougars, gets across the 25, down to the 30, getting down to the 34, 35-yard line, where it'll be a first and 10 outside the own 30-yard line for the Northview Cougars. Coming up to make the hit, uh, Maurice Adams, number 17 for the Tiger coverage team, and just not wanting to kick it deep. Northview's got the ball up right at their 35-yard line for first and 10, and again, when you decide to kick off, maybe they've got some trick plays up the sleeve to start with. Yeah. Let's go with the wide out. Anthony Spann going wide out to the far side of the field, the short side. Splitting his two backs, Caleb McCoy is the quarterback on a first and 10. Hands off, second back through, coming across the right side. Gets across the 35, down to the 40, just across the 40-yard line. Pulled down at the 40-yard line was Laquan Pugh. Pugh, the halfback, gets it across the 40, and a good first down pickup of about six yards, where it'll make it second and about four situation for the Northview Cougars. The 26th meeting between these two teams, the Dothan Eye Tigers holding a 13-12 to 12 edge. Dothan Eye Tigers, I think, have won the last four in a row. And... First play starts off good for Northview, picking up better part of six yards on the play. Wing to the left side. Caleb McCoy hands off again to Pew. Pew cuts across the left side. He got uh, back to the line of scrimmage. He might have lost about a half a yard on the play. So the Northview Cougars electing to go this time. To Almost student body left, and Pew found very little running room. He was stopped behind the line of scrimmage, lost about a yard on the plate. Let's make it second and five situation for the Northview Cougars. The Cougars looking to win for the first time in what I believe 29 outings. 29 their outings. Their 30th outing. The Dothan Eye Tigers, however, on the other hand, have matched only three wins in the last two seasons. Let's go third and five, third and five. First offensive series, wing to the right side for the Northview Cougars. That's Jar Black. This time, Caleb. McCoy dishes off on the left side. The pass is incomplete in Dothan territory. The pass intended on the far side. I believe that was uh, Chamar Pennywell. P Pennywell, the intended receiver. Ball falls incomplete. That's going to be a fourth down situation. Pennywell was coming a drag across, lining up strong side right, formation to the right, cut across on a drag pattern, and McCoy had him open. He just overthrew that one. A break for the Tigers. And first offensive series, the Northview Cougars are stopped on a fourth and five situation. Eric Thomas will be ready to receive the punt inside his own 30-yard line. The Northview Cougars punting for their first offensive series. Had a good game. There's a snap. It's a little high. Getting it off. It's going to be a very short kick off the side of the punter. Side of the foot of the punter. It's going to take a North Dolphin bounce. And it bounces all of about. That was about a two-yard punt. It gets back to the uh, Northview 42-yard line. So the snap a little high. Unable to regain composure and kick it off and going off the side of his foot. That was uh, netted about two yards on the play. But he saved some points there going up high to get the ball. The Dothan Tigers get a lucky break. Maybe a two-yard punt. Dothan has the ball first and 10 on Northview's 42-yard line for their first series this evening. Dothan winners last year, I believe, 15-12 to 12 was the final score there. We've got a brand new ball game. This is the Dothan Eye Tigers get uh, Brenson out on the field for the first time tonight. 9 of 25, 69 yards in the passing department. Wing to the left side. Here's a pitch out going. Here's a sweep going to the left side. That's Willie Jackson. Jackson tries to find running room. He cut back, cuts back to the right, and he found very little running room. Might have gained a yard on the play. That's going to bring up the second and nine situation. That time, a little toss to Willie Jackson. Jackson really couldn't make up his mind where he wanted to go on the play. He hesitated just enough for the Cougars to come up and make the stop after about a short two-yard gain. Well, that time, the defensive end on this side, Brandon Martin, did a good job in containment. Didn't lot let Willie Jackson get started around him, and as a result, short gain on the play. Thomas, wing to the right side. Jackson, the lone setback. Dead Brenson, who send Thomas in motions, going straight up the middle, is Willie Jackson. Jackson pumps forward inside the 40, gets to about the 36-yard line. That was a good three, four-yard pickup by Willie Jackson. Jackson coming in as a leading ground gainer for the Dothan High Tigers, 274 yards on the year. On the ground, he's had seven receptions for 92 yards. That brings up a third and four situation at the 927 mark of the first period for the Dolphin 9 Tigers. Could this be the last game? Boy, the rumblings have continued. They've been hot and heavy. I know you probably on the inside. We'll talk about that as they split them left and right. Double wingback situation. 
Brenson. This time, Brenson hands off. The wing back to the left side, coming across, trying to find a little bit of running room inside the 35, down to the 33-yard line, and spun out of bounds that time. And really, a little slow in getting up. Zarek Thomas. Thomas was wing to the right side. He's going to be, uh, let's see, what they, where they mark the ball. He gets a good spot. But as we said, they're going to uh, they're going to bring the chains over to the from the far side. As we said, rumblings the last few weeks about the consolidations of the school. And I know you're sort of on the inside, Coach. Uh, well, what's happening? Is, is there a, is there any truth to this story? The or Board of Education made a proposal in their last board meeting, from what I understand, to study the feasibility of combining the two high schools. A lot of ramifications in that, also, when you start thinking about it. That is good enough for a first down. So the Little Tonight Tigers get the first first down of the ball game here at the 8.50 mark of the first period. Often called a game of inches, maybe half a football length, but it is good enough to move the chains. First and 10 for the Dothan Tigers on the 32-yard line. This is the 26th meeting of, uh, between the two schools. How many have you missed, Coach? In one form or another, you've been involved in every and one of them. Just you? about every one of them, either as a spectator or, or the last or most of them with or you up here, or right? up here with you. Okay, we've got a first and ten for the Dolphin Nine Tigers. Wing, double wing formations. Eric Thomas, wing to the right, to the left is Philip Thomas. Lone setback is Willie Jackson. Brinson is the quarterback. The sophomore, hands off. Nope, this time he is rolling, rolling to his right. He's going to try and run with it. He puts his head down, come, coughs the ball up. It's going to be recovered, it looks like, by the Northview Cougars inside their 30-yard line. Unless, do yep, no, well, let's find out who came up with it. The Northview is pointing that they did come up with it. And they did. The Northview Cougars come up with the ball as Brenson. Brenson tried to find running room. That play very slow and developing because he took a looping. Uh, he, he just took a big loop trying to turn that corner. And really, I don't know how hard he was hit, but that ball just seemed to come out inside the 30-yard line. But he did have the ball in the left hand. He was just laying it out there. The Northview team alertly falls on it. Looks like Dothan was trying to hit the back on a deep seam pattern that time. Got good coverage for this Northview secondary. The turnover, first and 10 Northview. First and 10 for the Northview Cougars inside their own 30-yard line. This time, Caleb McCoy hands off to... Uh, uh, to and he fumbles it. And he fumbles the ball. And look, it looks like the Dolphin Eye Tigers might come up with it. John Hughes might have come up with it. John Hughes, I believe, was the man who came up with it. And the Dolphin Eye Tigers get the ball on turnovers. Back-to-back -back plays, back-to-back -back turnovers. And North, the Dolphin Eye Tigers gained a couple of yards on the play. Now they're going to have first and 10 inside the Northview 29-yard line. And just again, Pew on the sweep. Looked like he had some daylight. One man to beat. But the ball's in his left hand, which means it's to the inside. Hughes slaps it out. Falls right on top of it. Doesn't try to pick it up. Dothan, change of possession again. First and 10 inside the 30-yard line. Inside the 30th and 29, first and 10 at the 823 mark for the Dolphin Nine Tigers. Brinson in a quarterback, single wing to the right side. Double wide outs going out up to the right side. Here's the pitch out going to Willie Jackson. Jackson finding running room. He gets out to about the, he gets inside about the 26, 27 yard line is where they mark the ball. Showing good. Now after a pickup of a couple of yards, let's make it second and eight situation for the Dolphin Nine Tigers. Jeremy Thomas inside linebacker or Daniel Flowers, just good pursuit on both of them, getting to the football and putting him down. Going as a wide out to the right side is Chris Parrish. Chris Parrish. Double wing formation for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. Brenson sends Eric Thomas in motion. This time, Brenson hands off to Willie Jackson. Jackson gets it inside the 25 to about the 24 23 yard line. And that was a pickup of a couple of yards, and that's going to make it a third and three situation for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. 7.28 to go in the first period. No score in the ballgame thus far. The Dolphin Eye Tigers taking uh, the ball over on a turnover by the Northview Cougars, who the play before had uh, gotten it on a turnover. Wide out, going left to right side, double wing formation. Willie Jackson in the backfield. Eric Thomas to the right side. To the left is Philip Thomas. Brenson is a quarterback on a third and three situation inside the 25 yard line. Let's hand off on a double uh, handoff. Got Getting daylight. Philip Thomas. Thomas gets inside the 15 yard line all the way down to the 10 yard line that's good enough for a first down it'll be a first and goal for the Dolphin Nine Tigers just inside the 10 yard line well we've seen them on that downhill sweep the man in motion this time they hand the ball to Zarek Thomas but he hands it to Philip Thomas on the double reverse got the good block by the way out on the side on pew over there and Philip Thomas runs it inside the 10 first and goal for the Dolphin Tigers 655 to go in the first period the Dolphin Nine Tigers knocking on the door first and goal just inside the 10 yard line 
Resent Parrish out to the right side. Jackson's in the backfield all by, his, by himself. Jackson gets the handoff. He gets inside the five-yard line, down to the four-yard line. It'll be a second and goal inside the five, down around the four-yard line. It's six and a half to go, and the clock moving. The Golden Eye Tigers taking over from the 29-yard line and moved it inside the five on a second and goal situation. Just a good push by the right side of the offensive line. Of course, that's McCall over there, and it looks like hipping him out now at right guard and on the series, Austin. Let's go with the double wing. Brinson, the sophomore quarterback, over center on a second and goal inside the five. Handoff again, this time to Willie Jackson. Jackson on a uh, second attempt gets inside the uh, three down to about the two-yard line. That's where you get it dangerous when you try that second attempt. A lot of times the ball is coughed up in there, and he got rolling around on top of everybody. Oh, fortunately unable to hang on to it. It's going to bring up a third and goal. Looks like at about the two-yard line. Well, Willie Jackson, that was all him on that one, Gil. He got hit about the four-yard line in just second and third effort. And as you said, we've seen it been coughed up many a time, just trying to get it to the goal line. Stopped about two yards short, third down here. Okay, double wing formation, 529 to go in the first period. Dothan knocking on the door. This time they hand it off to Willie Jackson. Jackson tries to find running room. He has straightened up as he approached the line of scrimmage. That's it. He might have lost about a half a yard on the play. Don't know if he got the original line of scrimmage. That's going to bring up a fourth down situation. Fourth and goal from about the three-yard line for the Delta Nine Tigers. Looks like we're going to bring in the kicking game, try and put three up. Get three points and take it to the house. We'll kick off again. But in that double split formation, a lot of times when you guess right, you stunt the right way. You just don't have enough to block them. Willie Jackson didn't get back to the line of scrimmage, so it's going to be about a 20-yard attempt here. 20-yard attempt by the Dolphin High Tigers. And, of course, doing the kicking is uh, Drew Johnson. Johnson puts it through the uprights. It's good at 4.42 to go in the first period. The scoreboard reads Dolphin 3, Northview nothing. We'll be back in 30 seconds. A 442 mark thanks to a back-to-back -back turnovers Dolphin take able to take advantage of their turnover as they recover the ball inside the Northview 30-yard line and it's been a tale of turnovers for the Northview Cougars in the last two seasons well anytime you put it down you can't afford to give the ball up Northview gives it up inside the 30-yard line you're supposed to court, score put some type of points on the board and take the lead you've got to say Northview comes in it's a victory when you keep them out of the end zone Gil and maybe that might fire them up we hope not but again you look you never know what's going to happen we haven't seen this many turnovers in this game in several here's years here's johnson johnson another low dribbler down around the 10 yard line picked up the 10 the 15 the 20 down to the 25 getting across the 25 down to the 30 yard line again just outside the 30 yard line the northview cougars start off first and 10 and running it back for the Northview Cougars. I believe that might be Dylan Ward. Dylan Ward got it on the hash mark to the far side at the 10 yard line, got it to the almost the 31 yard line, first and 10 for Caleb McCoy. And the Northview Cougars looking for their first win in two seasons. 434 to go in this first period. Wide out, going out to the left side. McCoy has gone to the air one time, intended for Pennywell on a fourth down situation. Sending it back in motion this time. On a handoff, giving it to the fullback. The first man through, Justin Brooks. Brooks gets it across the 35 to about the 38-yard line. And that's just basically student body right, student body left sweep. Get the guards out there. Get you back out there. The quarterback, even McCoy's out there trying to throw a block. The result's going to be about a seven-yard gain for North. Seven and a half, eight-yard gain. Second and two situation. A big pickup on Justin Brooks on a first down situation. Breaking the huddle. Let's send Ward far out to the uh, wide side of the field, the left side of the field, splitting the two backs. Caleb McCoy has a wing to the right side. A handoff. Going for the first down situation. Brooks doesn't get it, and he is pushed back behind the line of scrimmage. Good defensive pursuit that time by the Dolphin High Tigers. We've seen Fred Glenn, Fred Glenn get trapped, get trapped game after game. That time on the trap, he stands right in the hole, just like you would teach it, Gil. Actually going to knock him back about a yard loss. Help from Fred Foster. Third down now and still four yards for Northview. Third and for short four situation, 3.33 to go. Double wide outs over here on the near side. Also here on the near side is DeVega. Vega. DeVega is the wing to the right side. McCoy this time hands off to Laquan Pugh. Pugh gets across the 40 to about the 42-yard line where he is stopped over there by the Dolphin High Tigers. Pulling him down on Terrell Adams. Adams makes the stop, but however, there's a flag on the play. It's going to be against the Dolphin High Tigers. On sportsmanlike conduct against the Dolphin High Tigers. 
That was, uh, I believe, a dead ball situation, wasn't it, Mike? Dead ball situation. So it wasn't take... hit late out of bounds, but they said something after the play mm -hmm. was over. Right. Now the hit, Andrell Adams just made as good a clean shot on the ball carrier, put him down, put him down hard. But then it was somebody else in the back of the play involved. And of course, this is a no-brainer. 15 free ones, you take it. 15 free ones and still another first down. They had made the first down on the carry. That's going to take it into Dolphin territory. Carry it into Dolphin territory all the way down to the 42-yard line. It'll be a first and 10 for the Northview Cougars. Actually, there's, they get two first downs in that clip right there. They made enough yardage for the first down, then get another first down for the 15-yarder walk-off against the Dolphin Eye Tigers on Sportsmanlike Conduct. 3:09, clock moving, time left in the first period. 3-0 ball game, thanks to a 20-yard field goal by Drew Johnson. Caleb McCoy, McCoy gets a handoff, going to the big man, Justin Brooks. Brooks tries to find running room off the left side. He gets inside the 40-yard line, down to about the 30-yard line. That was another about four or five yard pickup on the part of Justin Brooks. Brooks hit at the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard beyond that time, ran out of the grasp of Fred Glenn, and just second effort pushes those markers. Going to get the better part of five yards on the run. Anthony Spann coming into the ball game for the Northview Cougars, led by first year coach at Northview, Levy Botwell, coming over from Geneva, where he led a very successful Geneva program. Of course, Dothan under the first year leadership of Jamie Kelly. Wing to the right side. This time, McCoy, McCoy on the option play, decides to keep it, gets inside the 35-yard uh, line to the 34 before he is stopped. That's going to bring up a third down in about two situation. Third and two, for the Oakley Cougars on the pitch out that time on the option play. That time, McCoy decided to keep it. He couldn't get anywhere. He got to the line of scrimmage, gained maybe a yard on the play. That's going to bring up a third and two. Trio of defenders there that they string it out down the line of scrimmage and just make McCoy run to the sidelines. Foster's there, Adams is there, as well as Brandon McGriff. Again, short third down play here. Got to hold him out. Ward goes wide to the left side. Wing to the right side is Jarrah Black. Black goes in motion now. Here's handoff going right up the middle. Justin Brooks. Brooks finds running room. He might have been close enough for a first down. No, he might be a little short. From where it looks like the official <laughs> the angle is that right we here. Have, yeah, the angle that we have. Yep, he is going to be a little short. That's going to bring up the fourth down, and it looks like less than one. Now they're going to take a timeout for a measurement here at the 132 mark of a fast-moving first period. Dothan leading by a score of three to nothing. Thanks to a 20-yard field goal by Drew Johnson. That was a big important thing for Dothan not to come up empty after that turnover. They had to put some points on the board, and really that helps the Dothan high side, and plus that gives something the Northview Cougars to think about. Well, you're three points ahead. That's, right. That's the biggest thing when it gets down to the bottom line. The measurement does come up, maybe 18 inches short, Gil, and it's decision time for Northview, Bowell and his staff, and without hesitation, they're, they're going, going for it. it. I'd, I'd look for Brooks on this play. Brooks. Caleb, I don't think, Caleb McCoy doesn't seem to be big enough, but Brooks has had pretty good success riding right up the middle of the Dothan uh, defense. So McCoy hands off to Brooks, and he does, and Brooks gets the first down, like we called it, just inside the 30-yard line. He got the first down. And about three extra yards, almost yep. to the 30-yard line. And just a good push up front by the Northview offensive line on the right side. New set of chain, new set of downs. They move the chains. First and ten again. At the 31-yard line, smack dab in the middle of the field between the hash marks. Breaking the huddle is Todd Scheibs. You got Ziegenfelder, Bowie, along with Morgan Hill up front for the Northview Cougars. McCoy is the quarterback on a first and ten. And this time on the option play, McCoy looking for running room. He stumbles. He expected to be stopped. All of a sudden, he stumbles forward. He stumbled forward for about a six-yard pickup all the way to the 25-yard line. I don't think he expected to get that far. It looked like he was going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage, but he kept going at an angle, and all of a sudden he found himself with about a five, six-yard pickup, second and four situation at the Dothan 25-yard line. Just ran right under the arms of Hughes there. Looked like number 11. The linebacker had a shot at him, didn't lock up, gets that extra yardage. Span to the left side, wing to the right is DeVega. This time, uh, handing off, going to Justin Brooks. Brooks finds running room inside the 15-yard line. He was being pulled down by a whole host of Tigers. However, not until he gets all the way down inside the 15 to about the 13-yard line. A new set of downs for the Northview Cougars as they move the chains. They want to come up. Well, well, Dothan came up with three. They want to come up with six. Right now, the Dothan Nine Tigers call timeout with 22 seconds to go in the first period. The scoreboard reads Dothan three and Northview nothing. We'll be back in 30 seconds. <coughs> well, it's one 
more game for the North for the Delta High Tigers. They've got the Eufaula High Tigers coming in here next Thursday night. Thursday night, 7 o'clock is kickoff time. And I'll tell you what, Eufaula High Tigers enjoying successful back-to-back -back years up there in Barber County. Very good football team uh, in the playoffs again this year. Uh, one of the more highly ranked teams as well. In fact, I think they'll be coming in here undefeated. Uh, undefeated, they're in the top, what, two or three? Or, or top the first? three, yeah. Okay, the Dolphin Cougars coming off the sidelines here. They got a first and 10 situation inside the Dolphin 15 at the 13 yard line with 22 seconds remaining in this first stanza. 3 0 ball game in favor of the Dolphin High Tigers. Dolphin drew first blood on a 20 yard field goal by Drew Johnson. Caleb McCoy, McCoy over center. This time, McCoy. Hands off, going straight up the middle and getting inside the Dolphin 10 yard line. Justin Brooks and enjoying a fine run here in this offensive series. Gets inside the Dolphin 10 yard line. They're going to uh, spot it just outside the seven yard line. So that was another about a six yard pickup on the part of Brooks. Oh no, Brooks, not Brooks. But, Thomas uh, was in, I believe. Yeah, they had Tom yeah. Brooks out for a rest, and it's nothing fancy there. Jeremy just Thomas. There's the end of the first period. The scoreboard reads: Dolphin three, Northview nothing. We'll be back in one minute. Out a second and three situation for the Northview Cougars inside the Dothan 10 yard line. Going in motion, McCoy hands off to Justin Brooks. Brooks puts his head down, gets inside the five yard line. That looks like it's going to be good enough for a first down, or it might be short of a first down. I'm looking over at the side official over here. And he marks it's going to be a little short of the first down. It's going to bring up a third down situation. You know, we were talking about it before the game, and uh, Coach Bothell and the staff, I wonder if they use the the uh, you know pumping up of the Northview Cougars, saying, hey, look, this might be the last year that Northview exists. Let's get let's close out the season with a victory. Let's well, any, their history. it doesn't take much yeah. to get fired up on That's this right, game from either side. Any any added incentive, big fourth down play here. Jarrah Black over on the left side. Here's going to hand off to Justin Brooks. Brooks, he got first down yards, and he's pushed back because he got inside the three yard line and that looks like it is good enough for a first down it will be a first and goal inside the three yard line for the Dolphin Cougars at the 11 16 mark of the first half three nothing ball game in favor of the Dolphin High Tigers and again just had to get the ball to about the three yard line and the way they have it spotted it is inside it the is the first down that is the fifth first down for the Dolphin Cougars they started it all just outside their own 30 yard line have put it to the Dolphin three yard line so you're talking right now very close to about a 67-yard drive for the Northview Cougars here. But then again, you've got to take away the 15. That's well, right. you take away the 15 free ones, and maybe the drive changes. You never know. Northview's down there knocking on the door inside the three. McCoy over center, Todd Shipes. Again, they hand it off to Justin Brooks. Brooks is going to be denied the end zone. He's going to be stopped at about the one-yard line. Boy, he got there, and it looked like he just met the wall. He was straightened up, and he was stopped right there just when you, he thought he had a little bit of a a little bit of room to get into the end zone. He is stopped. It's going to bring you a second and goal from the one-yard line. Just hit a perfect picture tackle. Just square up to him. Don't let him bounce either way. Roll left to right. And the pushback, second down and goal. Ten and a half minutes to go in the first half. Three-nothing ball game. Second and goal from just outside the one-yard line. Again, McCoy on the signals over center shapes. He's going to hand off go to Justin Brooks. Brooks is going to be stopped again. Oh, they say touchdown. He broke, he broke it. And the Northview Cougars get into the end zone on a 69-yard drive at the 10-15 mark of the first half. Just second effort by Brooks. Hit at the line of scrimmage, but would not be denied. Pushed it in. Northview scores touchdown at the 10-15 mark of the second quarter. 6-3 lead for Northview. That's a 69-yard drive on the part of the Northview Cougars. They go into the 10-15 mark. This is going to be very big, 6-3 to three ball game, and they've had trouble. I think the uh, PAT uh, kicker quit, so uh, it'll be Brandon Ziegenfelder. Ziegenfelder attempts the point after. He puts it through the uprights at the 10-15 mark. The scoreboard reads Northview 7, no 3. We'll be back after this 30-second timeout. The Northview Cougars put it up on the end, end of the end zone and put themselves up by a 7-3 margin. An impressive 69-yard drive, like you say, helped out by the Dolphin High Tigers. Uh, personal foul on a dead ball situation on a 15-yarder and an additional first down as the Northview Cougars now go up by a score of 7-3. Zingenfeller will be kicking off for the uh, Northview Cougars here. We take a look at the flag, not in, no movement on the part of the flag, no win, just a gorgeous, gorgeous football Friday. Patrick Wilson for the Dolphin High Tigers. Derek Thomas also. We're going to see some fresh faces in here for the Dolphin High Tigers. 
Being ready to kick off. Ziegenfeld puts this low on the ground. It's going to be fielded. Oh, look out. Picked up at the Dolphin nine yard line, getting across the 10. Stutter step to the 15, down to about the 18 yard line, where it'll be a first and 10 for the Dolphin nine Tigers inside their own 20 yard line. You cannot run with it until you pick it up. That time looking like he was going for the ball. Cruz, Kevin Cruz, just mishandled the ball. Dolphins backed up inside the 20, the good coverage to make the hit. Dolphins now 82 yards away from pay dirt. And they've got 10.07 showing on the clock. That's the time left in the first half. Gil Anthony along with Mike Hutto. Coming out here to the near side is Drury. On setback is Willie Jackson. Double wing formation for Brenson. Brenson, the sophomore quarterback, hands off to Willie Jackson. Jackson off the left side, gets across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Just outside the 20, he is stopped after about a two, two and a half yard pickup. Flowers with help from defensive tackle. Thomas just closed that one off, trying to run the trap over the left guard. Second and eight situation, 9.49 to go. Play clock down around 17. Seems to be a little confusion. The offensive line is set. The bat, now the backfield gets up there in double wing. Dury comes over here to the near side, perishes to the far side. Brenson over center. Brent Smith, the center. Willie Jackson, Brenson this time. There's a pass. Oh, almost intercepted by the Northview Cougars and almost get, getting his hands on it, Ronald DeVega. DeVega looked like he was the intended receiver on that play. And hit him in a bad place right there on about the 26-yard line right in the hands, trying to do the quick post uh, to the near sideline over there and just didn't see the linebacker getting out into the flat. Third down and long for Dothan. That time, Brenson, I think, let go of it a little bit too soon. He didn't realize how much time he really had left. Was in a little bit of a hurry to get rid of the ball. Let's make it third down, third and eight situation. Again, Dury to the near side. Zarek Thomas, wing to the right. Brenson this time again drops back. He is looking. Got to make Zarek is open. Field. He's got a man almost. I'd, and let's see if it's intercepted. I, I think it hit the ground on that one from my angle, but I couldn't no, tell. They, Yep, it hit the ground, it hit the ground. That's, Incomplete, yeah. hit the ground, according to the official who had a bird's eye view on it on the far side. He was facing the uh, the, the the intended uh, defender who came well, up with it. They go by looking, is there something to keep that ball from hitting the ground? And I could see his right arm on the ground from here. Didn't get it underneath there, but he did a very good job. Almost sold it there to the officials. Pew and Ward are the two deep backs for the Northview Cougars. Dothan putting. Line of scrimmage is the 20-yard line. Oh! Had someone uh, get a, almost, and uh, is we going to have a flag on the play or not? It's going to be fielded on the far side by Laquan Pew inside the 40-yard line at the 38-yard line. I thought number 52 might have jumped for the Northview Cougars. They jumped, but evidently didn't penetrate into the neutral zone. A good kick, though, by Lashley. Pew does fumble it, but falls on it at the Northview 38-yard line. After the, you talk about Lashley, Lashley has punted 44 times this year, averaging just under 33 and a half, uh, 33 and a half yards a kick. So Lashley really has been called upon what uh, we're talking about uh, six times a game that he has been punting, and he has kept that average up there. From the 38-yard line, first and 10 for the Northview Cougars. Going up the middle, Justin Brooks. Brooks bangs it helmet to helmet across the 40 to the 42-yard line. And pick up about three on the play at the 8.50 mark. And they all know they say a pick up about five on the play. So let's make it a second and five situation. Ward comes into the ball game for the Northview Cougars. Wing T formation, power plays, lead play, using the halfback to block. Flowers doing the uh, carrying the football, second down and five for Northview. Eight and a half minutes to go in the first half. Seven to three in favor of the Cougars. Outside their own 40-yard line at the 43. Get in a wing T. Get winged to the left side, that's DeVega. Caleb McCoy hands off this time to Pew. Pew finds running room on the left side. He gets across the 45 yard line. He is stopped after a couple of yard pickup, dragging him down from behind for the Dilton High Tigers. First of all, I think it was Fred Foster who made initial contact. Fred and Foster had him, yep. but then turned him loose and the pursuit was able to get there before he was able to get to the first down yardage. But Pew, not one of the bigger runners, but he gets low to the ground, Gill, hard to take him off his feet. Third and three situation. Now the Northview Cougars call timeout on the third and three, 7.55 to go in the first half. We'll be back after this 30-second timeout. 
back here at Ripview Stadium at the 755 mark of the first half. The Northview Cougars leading by a score of 7-3. to three. They find themselves in a third and three situation. They decide to call timeout and talk it over because this right now is a big, big play. And I see we have folks still coming in here on just a gorgeous, gorgeous Friday evening. Got a pretty good north view following. This is one of the, you know, take a look at this uh, over there, the Dothanai Tigers, you know. That's about their usual crowd, but we thought we'd, we'd normally have it filled up over there on the far well, side. Well, uh, like I say, I don't know. This might be the least crowd we've had yep. in several years. Uh, during the timeout, Gill's trying to milk the Northview coaches over there for a little help. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he couldn't get yeah, them to Coach Bertishaw over there wouldn't take one of the mics and help us, you know. We want, we want to mic them, you know, like they do in baseball. Caleb McGoy hands off Justin Brooks. Brooks finds running room on the left side. He's got enough for the first down. He might, he might have gotten there. Let's see if he gets a generous spot or not. Yeah, the way the spot is... He's got the first down. They got it outside the 30, outside the 48-yard line, and they have the uh, chain <laughs> marker, the first down marker inside the 48. That time Brooks got to the line of scrimmage, did not see daylight, the a point of attack. He just slipped to the outside, needed a short gain, did pick up first down, first and 10, just outside their 48-yard line. Justin Brooks has enjoyed a good first half here against the Dolphin Eye Tigers. On a wing tee, wing to the left side, that would be Jara Black. Wing to the right, rather. On a first and 10 from their own 48-yard line, Brooks again. He is tripped up at the line of scrimmage. However, he falls forward into Dothan territory. They're going to say, nope, they're going to say his knee went down at the 49-yard line. That time, again, trying to do the quick trap that's hurt Dothan so many games this year. They closed it down, Gil, made the play just right where they're supposed to be. It wasn't a hard hit, got enough of the foot. Knee goes down, just a one-yard gain on the play. Shipes breaks the huddle. He does the snapping. Span is wide out to the right side. Wing T, wing to the left side. Pew, along with Brooks in the backfield. Here's handoff going to Pew. Pew tries to find running room, cuts back up, and he is stopped at the line of scrimmage. That's it. He lost the uh, original line of scrimmage. He lost about a yard on the play. Good defensive pursuit that time by the Dolphin Eye Tigers. And a much better job of tackling Pew that time. An elusive runner that he is. You've got to lock up. Of course, anybody that's got it, you just don't hit him and bounce off. They wrapped him up that time, going to basically lose the yard they gained on the pre previous play. And last time in third down situation, they were running the tight end across on the kind of bootleg action. The tight end would be coming on this play from right to left. 6.26 on the clock moving. Time left in the first half. A 7-3 ball game on a third and almost third and about 10 situation. McCoy this time hands off to Pew on an inside trap. Gets it into the territory at the 45 down to the 40-yard line. Carrying the ball is Ronald DeVega. DeVega gets it all the way down inside the Dothan 40-yard line at the 39-yard line. That time on an inside trap, sort of inside reverse there. Uh, handing it off and uh, getting it to DeVega. DeVega gets it inside the Dothan 40-yard line at the 38 and a half. Good play right there. The pursuit of the Tigers just overran the play. Nobody left at home to take it. And as a result, first and 10 Northview. Pew, along with Brooks in the backfield. Over there on the far side is DeVega. First and 10 inside the Dothan 40. Hand off to Brooks. Brooks finds running room. He has straightened up after he gained about a yard or two. And that's it, a good two yard pickup for Brooks. But you've got to make sure that your back stays at home on the outside. They closed in. And, of course, out there on the field, you can see who's got the football when you're reading your keys. They closed it off. Brooks just finding it tough ever over the right side. Brooks, the sophomore running back for the Northview Cougars. Second and nine situation. That was a gain of one for Brooks. Wide out coming over here to the near side. That'd be Dylan Ward. Wing T to the right. Caleb McCoy, the quarterback. This time, hands off again. This time, going to the wing back. That'd be, uh, I believe that was Jarrah Black. Black might have gotten a yard on the play. 5.27 on the clock moving. Third down, third and eight situation. Third and eight, here's where went, they went the reverse last time. And gained first down yardage in a long yardage situation. Just good reaction by the Tiger defense on the trap play, or the wing back coming back. And now... Now yeah, let's see who called officials call timeout. Looks like we've got a Zach Curry with his helmet off over there. We've got a timeout to get the equipment fixed. D'Angelo oh, Curry, something other uh, something other wrong with his helmet. Yep. And instead of taking a timeout, Dothan sends in substitute and coming in for Curry is going to be Hall, Cornelius Hall. Okay, on a third and eight situation. Anthony Spann in for the uh, Northview Cougars. He'll line up as a wideout to the near side. 
Hash mark to the left side is where the Northview Cougars have the ball to the near side on a third and long, a third and about seven situation. Making the handoff on a bootleg play. McCoy, McCoy, airs it out there. The pass is incomplete, intended on the far side. That was Pennywell coming across, and he just overthrew him. And uh, Pennywell had his man beat on the far side. And Pugh was wide open on the deep post pattern that time. McCoy did see the Pennywell open, went to him, just overthrew the ball. And as a result, looks like Northview's going, well, I didn't know where they were uh, going to punt situation. They will punt it away. Yeah. McCoy had Pennywell locked in the whole time. He was going to one play, and that was it, one receiver. 4.43 to go in a punting situation for the Northview Cougars. There's a snap. There's a punt. It's going to be a short one, short and high. It's going to take a Northview bounce inside the five-yard line all the way down to the, about the two-and-a-half-yard line, two-yard line. So with 4.31 to go in the first half, the Dolphin Eye Tigers, 98 yards of real estate to cover here in four and a half minutes. you got to break off a couple of big plays there. Well, you're looking at a situation probably not – convinced that Northview was going to hit, go ahead and punt it away. They kept the regular defense out there on the field, didn't get back and catch the punt. It was a short punt. Hits takes the Northview bounce, and as a result, 98 yards away. Daniel Flowers punting for the uh, Northview Cougars at the four and a half minute mark. Dothan takes over. First and ten as Brinson and the unit come back out on the field at their own two-yard line, deep in the shadows of their own goal line, their own goal posts. They get back in motion this time on a reverse, looking for a little bit of running room on Zaren the far gets side. to the sideline. He's, side he's going. At the 10, the 15, the 20, the 25, the 30, the 35, the 40, the 45. He's in Northview territory. Act at the 45, the 40, the 30, all the way down to the 28-yard line. There it is, Zarek Thomas. Zarek Thomas all the way down inside, and there's a flag on the play. All the way down inside the Northview 30-yard line. Like we say, we needed a big player, too. We were at our own two-yard line. And that time, Zarek Thomas got out of the grasp of somebody that had him in the end zone, turned up the field, got a good block on the wide receiver, but the flag is down on the ground. And for it's against the Dothan Eye Tigers. Personal foul against the Dothan Eye Tigers. Still a good run, but I'll tell you what, it nullified well, see, what would have been a better, better run inside the Northview 30. But you still got the ball at the Northview 41-yard line. Good run by Zarek Thomas that time. But out of field goal range, that's two big mistakes that the Dothan Tigers have made this evening. Don't know which one it was called on, but yeah, the personal foul, basically from the 26 now to the 41. Yeah, that personal foul might have cost Dothan a few points. Let's see what develops. We still have 4.06 on the clock, moving first and 10 for the Dothan Eye Tigers from the Northview 41-yard line. Willie Jackson in the backfield. Zarek Thomas wing to the right side. Here's handoff going to Philip Thomas. Thomas finds a little bit of running room to the 35-yard line. About a five, six-yard pickup. About a good five-yard pickup. That'll bring up a second and five situation. Dothan coming with its version of the wing back trap to Philip Thomas. Got a good block there by the guard on that side. Looks like Axtell, number 56, is in. Got the good block, good play of first down, second down, five, five and a half yards. Makes that playbook a whole lot better and a lot easier to call. Three and a half minutes to go here in the first half of a seven to three ball game in favor of the Northview Cougars. Looking for their first win in 29 outings. Brenson over center, Trent Smith. Setting a man in motion this time. Here's a double reverse going to the right side, looking for a little bit of running room. Unable to find it. And getting to the 35 yard line, they try, they try to take the ball away. Philip Thomas. Thomas hangs on to it. And, and that's going to bring really up a made third something, down Although it was yeah. a short game, made something out of nothing right there to give the Tigers about a, sec a third down and three right here instead of losing a yard or so and still having to make a better part of five yards for the we'd first still, down. We'd still like a first down right here. I still wouldn't feel comfortable in the, for that field goal. Got to get a first down, have plenty of time. 2.43 clock, moving time left in the first half. 7-3 ball game in favor of Northview. Willie Jackson in the backfield. Brinson over center. This time, here's a pitch out going to Willie Jackson. Jackson tries to find running room. He is tripped up. 
as peeling his defender that time. Good defensive play by the Northview Cougars trying to pick up the man. Flowers, uh, Flowers, Flowers, Flowers just shedded his defender and got around and got Willie Jackson instead of fourth down in a very short situation. That's fourth and seven. And uh, the ball is going to be put down at about the 37-yard line. So you're talking about a 54-yard attempt right there if we try a field goal. If you try for the three points, Flowers from his linebacker position came across our wide out in an attempt to try to block him. If you hit him, you hit him in the back. You've got a clip or a block in the back. It just depends on how the officials do call it. And Dothan will go ahead and take a timeout right here and talk it over fourth and long. Okay, 1.56 to go in the first half. 7-3 ball game in favor of Northview. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Back here at Ripview Stadium with 1.56 to go in the in the uh, first half, 7-3 to three ball game in favor of the Northview Cougars. Eric Thomas enjoying the longest run from the line of scrimmage this year for the Dothan Eye Tigers. Some, uh, let's see, we got 48, 58 yards. I don't know, do they officially count it where he was stopped? Uh, it will be put down there for this one. I guess it would be about a 54-yard attempt. 54-yard attempt for the Dothan Eye Tigers. Drew Johnson will attempt it. Near the center of the field, there's a snap placement of the ball. This is going to be a little bit short. It's going to come up short. And it looks as if with 150 to go. And the 15-yard penalty. The 15-yard penalty really cost the Dolphin High Tigers. Maybe eight to nine yards short. It falls in to about halfway into the end zone. And the penalty right there does move the Tigers out of scoring range where the 50-yarder comes up short. Now that penalty just turned everything around for the Dothan High Tigers because it's been in a totally different situation. You get the penalty, you uh, stay penalty free, you're at the 20 yard line, all of a sudden you can, you're can you talking seven points, so really that could have been a possible seven points that Dothan High, it cost the Dothan High Tigers on that 15 yard penalty. So the Northview two Cougars take over with 149 to go in this first half, leading by a score of seven to three, Caleb McCoy over center. McCoy, this time hands off Justin Brooks. Brooks finds a little bit of running room, not much. They'll probably be happy to go into the locker room, leading 7-3. A lot of cars still milling around. Rip U Stadium here at 90 seconds to go in the first half. 7-3 ball game. That was a gain of about three for the sophomore running back, Justin Brooks of the Northview Cougars. Anthony Spann wide out to the near side of the field. He got the wing, Jarrah Black, wing to the left side. Hand off to Pugh. Pugh cuts back against the grain. He is stopped at the line of scrimmage. That's it. He lost the original couple of yards. That's going to bring up a third down situation with 60 seconds to go. I think the Dothan Tigers do have one more uh, timeout that they can take, but you want to go ahead and make it get a fourth down situation here. They're going to take their time, 17 on the play clock. The uh, scoreboard shows 43 seconds. McCoy on a third and nine situation for the Northview Cougars outside his own 20 yard line. Cougars leading by a score of seven to three. Handoff going to Brooks. Brooks is straightened up at the 24 yard line. Let's see if the Dolphin Eye Tigers call Looks timeout. Like they do. For the timeout. They call timeout with 21 seconds to go in the first half. Not a fourth and five situation. So we've got a timeout. Let's we'll be back in 30 seconds. We've got it with 21 seconds remaining in the first half. The Northview Cougars leading the Dolphin Eye Tigers 7-3. Back to punt will be Daniel Flowers. Flowers at the 10-yard line. Dothan looks like well Dothan's 11 up there it. to leave no, no yep. doubt about it right yep. here. They got him 11 men going after it. There's a snap. It's a little high. And I think it was partially deflected. It's going to take a Dolphin bounce or a Northview bounce all the way to the 35 yard line where it will be downed. And they're just standing around the ball. It's going to be down with 7.4 seconds showing on the clock, taking a good Northview bounce inside the Dolphin 35 yard line. That time it looked like somebody got just a little bit of it. Could have possibly came out of there wobbly mm -hmm. end over end type of deal. And that's one of those plays years ago we used to work on the free kick when you have a chance possibly at fair catching that ball you do have the choice if you want to have that free kick from wherever you catch it and that time the Dothan Tigers try to go for the block 
look like to get a hand on it. They've got 7.4 seconds. Let's see if we just line it up here and see how far we can throw it down the field. And they got double wideouts over there on the uh, far side. Got Zarek Thomas along with Parrish. Brenson is dropping back. He's going to air it out there. Look out, it's long enough. Let's see what it's going to happen. It's going to fall incomplete, and there's the end of the first half. The end of the first half here at Ripview Stadium shows the Northview Cougars leading the Dolphin High Tigers. Could it be the first win of the year for the Cougars? We've got two quarters to go, and plus we've got halftime. 7-3 to three ball game in favor of the Northview Cougars over the Dolphin High Tigers. We'll be back after this. Your number one source for high school sports. You're watching the Scenic Sports Network. Anthony along with Mike Cutto in the 26th meeting of the Dothan Eye Tigers and Northview Cougars. Dothan holding a slim 13 to 12 margin as they have won the last four. There is a kickoff. It's going to be a low line drive. Picked up at the 16-yard line across the 20, 25, 30, line. down to the 35-yard line, to the 36-yard line, 37-yard line. First and 10 for the Dothan Eye Tigers in good field position and running it back for the Dothan Eye Tigers was Demetric Harris. Harris got it from outside the 10-yard line all the way to the Dothan. 37 yard line just outside the 37 first and 10 for the Dothan High Tigers and just did a good job of catching the football that time and not much trying to worry about doing anything fancy got the most out of the return as a result Dothan has excellent field position to start this series okay starting it from the 37 yard line here the first offensive series for the Dothan High Tigers they've got to get something going offensively wing to the left to the right side here's a handoff going we straight jumped. up the middle nope we jumped it Got a flag on the play. It's going to be a five-yard walk-off, I believe, against the Dothan Eye Tigers. Look like Dean, the tackle on the left mm -hmm. side, just a little bit anxious to get moving. Yeah, legal procedure, the call against Dothan. Third penalty of the ball game. Getting it all the way back, it'll be walked off to the Dothan 32-yard line. At times, we have been our own worst enemy in stretches this year and it, it has Come really back to had a coming back and not just shooting yourself in the foot it blowed your whole leg off thomas wing to the right side jackson is in the backfield on a first and 15 situation on the option play brenson keeps the ball he gets out to the 34 yard line he got back about three or four yards that's going to bring up a third down situation now that should be second down Jeremy Thomas doing a job on the option play. First time we've seen the Tigers run the play. Brenton coming down the short side, down the line. Not much room there. Okay, second and 13 situation for the Dothan Eye Tigers. They break their huddle. Parrish going wide out to the right side. To the near side is Dury. Wing to the right is Philip Thomas. Brenton over, over the center, Trent Smith. On the pitch out, taking the pitch out, rolling got his right now. He's got the wide open. Beat. Look out. Oh, almost intercepted. And cutting in front of him, Chris Parrish momentarily. Parrish had to slow. Parrish slowed down. Had he not slowed down, I think he might have had it. But Parrish slowed down a little bit. That gave Northview time to recover over there on the far side defensively. Pugh did a good job in reacting back after the ball's in the air because Parrish just doing a, a go down the sideline. Got to get a little bit more air under those deep throws. You can't just throw a line drive. Pugh went up, maybe not uh, deflected the ball as much as he blocked the vision of, of Parrish. He wasn't able to get his hands on it. That would have been a huge one right there. Zarek Thomas along with Parrish over on the far side. Near side is Dury. Wing to the right side on a third and 12. Faking the pitch out again. Here's a handoff going to Philip uh, Philip Thomas. Thomas gets it across the 40 to the 44-yard line. We're going to bring up a fourth down situation. Fourth and about four. And there's the difference in the five-yard penalty to start it off with. Lashley will come in to punt for the uh, second time tonight. And instead of having a first down by one yard, we have to kick it away. On a fourth and four situation for the Dothan High Tigers. Okay, it'll be Dylan Ward will be the deep man. Lashley back to punt. There's the snap. It's a good snap. Getting it off. Lashley. Lashley gets it high up in the air. It's going to take a Dolphin bounce inside the 10-yard line right at the 10. Boy. And picking it up instead of letting it roll. And, of course, getting it first and 10. Dylan Ward. Ward picked it up, and he is immediately 
put down to the ground at the turf, first and 10 from the 10 yard line. But again, if he doesn't catch it, it takes another hop. It's backed him up to the 10. And even though that's a gutsy play, you got to admire from going ahead and keeping it out of the shadows of the goalpost. But a good kick by Lashley, kicking away from coverage uh, from the return man, and the coverage is there to put him down. Got triple tens, 10-10 left in the third period at the 10-yard line, first and 10 for the Northview Cougars. De Vega in the backfield, along with Justin Brooks, Caleb McCoy over center. This time a handoff going to Justin Brooks. Brooks finds running room. He gets it outside the 10-yard line, out of the shadows of the 10, across the 13 to about the 13 and a half. A three-yard pickup by the sophomore running back, Justin Brooks. They're just running a weak side lead, meaning they're running away from the tight end formation. The halfback is coming up block. West read the play, moved over, gain of about three and a half, put him down second down and six yards, six and a half. Jeremy Thomas coming into the ball game. Dylan Ward comes into the ball game as he brings in the play, splits wide out to the left side on a uh, second down and seven situation. McCoy this time again hands off to uh, the running back in there. Number 34, that'd be Jeremy Thomas. Thomas gets it across the 15 to the 18 yard line. He's gonna be uh, short of a first down. Thomas, the ball carrier, 9.22 in the clock moving. Outside the uh, 15 to 17 and a half yard line. A third and about two situation. Third and short two, bringing in the play, Anthony Spann. And of course, this is huge for the Tigers. Get them backed up. Uh, Flowers doing the punting tonight, not able to get many much distance on his kicks. If we can hold him here, we'll Watch. have excellent field position. Watch Brooks in the backfield. McCoy over center. Hands off to Brooks off the left side. Brooks spins his way across the 20 to the 21 yard line. That wasn't good enough for a first down. Brooks has enjoyed a first, a fine first half. He gets his first carry of the second half. Gets it across the 20 and a fresh four for the Northview Cougars. And this little spin move at the end of the run, as you call it, Gill, guaranteed the Northview team another set of downs. Just second effort that time by Brooks. That's their seventh first down of the ball game. 840, 839. Clock moving, time left here in the third period. Outside the 20, McCoy this time. Now on the hands off to Justin Brooks. Brooks got a couple of yards on the play. <coughs> Run him out of bounds. Just good pursuit by the Tigers. Foster, West, and McGriff just stringing it to the sidelines, and that's how you handle that option. You just don't let him get turned upfield. Brings up a second and eight situation, 2.05. Split the wide out, Anthony Span to the left side of the field. Brooks, Pugh, the two running backs. For Caleb McCoy on a second and long situation. Sending a man in motion this time. Going in motion is Jarrah Black. Black tries to turn the corner on the far side of the field. Got to the 25 yard line. A three yard pickup. That's going to bring up a fourth. Or is that a third down situation? Going to be a third yeah, and a third. better part of five yards that time. Far side over there, Zarek Thomas doing a real good job, not letting them block him to the inside. And as a result, the defense was able to get there on the sweep. Third down, as we said, five yards for Northview. A big play defensively for the Dothan Eye Tigers coming up right here. Look out for Brooks. Brooks or Jarrah Black. Black wing to the right side. Sending Pew in motion this time. Rolling to his right is McCoy. McCoy intercepted and it's picked up by the Dothan Eye Tigers. Interception by Foster. Foster into the end zone. Touchdown, the Dothan Eye Tigers. And it all started as Caleb McCoy was hit. As he let go of the ball, it bounced right in front of Fred Foster. Who made the hit on McCoy? The defensive end, right side, coming through untouched. Got McCoy just as he was throwing the ball. As McCoy is hit, the ball bounces right up against Fred Foster into the air. Looky here what I found, the <laughs> Dothan Tigers. Catch a break. Fred Foster runs it in from about 10 yards out, 10 or 50. He was in between the 10 and 15 yard line. So he puts the Dolphin Eye Tigers up 10 to seven here. Fred Foster with the INT, his first of the year. At the 7.07 mark of the third period. Like you said, Fred Foster said, look what I have here. And it was free sailing into the end zone. There's a point after attempt, it is good. So at 7.07, the Dolphin Eye Tigers lead the Northview Cougars. We've got a 10-7 ball game. We'll be back in 30 seconds into the end zone, a looky here, see what I have, and into the end zone, a defensive player's dream. Well, Fred's, Fred's <laughs> done got a yeah. pick or two this year. That time it just came 
the hard rush, right defensive end, right side, didn't pick up the number, but McCoy's uh, back to pass. He gets hit from the back side, the blind side, if you will, not seeing, not feeling the rush. The result of the play, the big touchdown for the Dothan Tigers to take the lead. Getting ready to kick off. This one is going to be end over end. It's going to be a kick that's going to go out of, out of bounds. bounds. And of course, that'll be the choice to kick it again or take it up They're around the 35. It. And usually that's good enough field position for me. Gay Caleb McCoy and the crew comes up. And like you say, during the timeout, they, that's been happening. That, that type of play has been happening to Dothan Eye Tigers this year. Once again, we're uh, for one of the few times we're at the receiving end. Well, we, we caught the break instead mm -hmm. of giving it up. And uh, we've seen it happen to Dothan several times through the year. Uh, you go back to Opelika, play in Opelika really to the point that you really have a good shot of winning with uh, a one score, a touchdown, the fumble, they take the leads, don't relinquish. 7.07 to go in the third period, 10-7 ball game, handoff going to Mr. Justin Brooks. Brooks got to the line of scrimmage, that was it. This is the Northview Cougars, first and 10 from their 35-yard line, just outside their 35. It's gonna be second and a long nine. And Jonathan Hughes, number 11 from the linebacker position comes up and really does hammers him at the line of scrimmage and of course anytime you put the hat on him like that it makes it tough and it does wear him out. Ward comes into the ball game with the play he splits wide out to the left side. Brooks in the backfield along with Pew. Wing to the right side is Jarrah Black. Black goes in motion this time from right to left handoff going straight up the middle. No room there whatsoever. Dothan read that nicely coming off the bottom of the pile for the Dothan High Tigers would be number five Graham. Canarius Graham coming in, just closing it off. And uh, the play that we've seen out of the wing tee hurt Dothan, Phoenix City, uh, all those, Auburn, Smith Station, just that dive and that quick trap. The Dothan defense has come to play tonight and really hadn't let it hurt them. Second and nine situation now, or third and nine. Third and nine, big play for the Northview Cougars. McCoy takes a snap. Hands off going to Pew. Pew tries to find it, turns to tries to turn the left side. He has stopped short of the 40-yard line at the 39. So it's going to bring up a fourth and long situation, fourth and about six for the Dothan High Tigers as they did not allow Pew that time. Laquan Pew trying to turn the corner, did not allow them. They made him run east to west. Well, you basically can't draw up your defense any better. Josh West sees the play. He goes right down the line of scrimmage, turns it up, gets in between the blockers, and as a result, they hit him down. They gain a couple of yards, but they needed eight. Punt situation for Northview here. From the 39-yard line, Flowers punting from his own 25s. Eric Thomas is the deep back. There's a snap. It's a little high. Three-man rush put on by the Dothan Eye Tigers. And it goes off the side of the foot away from Eric Thomas. Thomas moves away from the ball. And it's going to be fielded at about the 21-22 yard line. So a pretty good punt that time by Flowers as uh, he almost, the Dothan Eye Tigers almost got a piece of it. Flowers kept his cool. He got rid of it and took a Northview bounce to the Dothan 22 yard line. Underwood and Reeves, I believe, the two that came the closest to getting their hands on the block. And of course, with the lead, you don't come up there and try to catch it. First and 10 for Dothan on about the 22 yard line. We'll take it there, run, a, get a couple of first downs here and get a drive going or sale. 10 to seven ball game, 5 or 6 to go in the third period. Dothan's offensive unit coming out on the field. Willie Jackson in the backfield. Double wide outs to the far side. The near side is Jury. First and 10, outside his own 20 yard line. Brenson, the sophomore quarterback, sends a man in motion. This time, handoff going to Willie Jackson. Jackson is tied up at the line of scrimmage and he is immediately stopped. I believe that might have been Mason Meredith. Meredith, one of the men, through and along with, uh, who is that, 37, Flowers. Flowers coming in from linebacker. Yep. Made the stop and about a two and a half yard loss on the part of Willie Jackson. Jackson is pushed back to the 19 yard line where it'll be a second down situation, second and 12. At the 442 mark of the third period, 10-7 ball game in favor of the Dothan High Tigers. Dean, Thedford, of course, Smith, been the center. Uh, the other guard over there, Axtell. Double wing formation for the Dothan High Tigers. On a second and long, sending a man in motion this time. Brenson, Brenson, hands off going to Willie Jackson. Jackson gets it across the original line of scrimmage, uh, across the 20 to about the 21-yard line where he is stopped. That'll bring up a third down situation, third and 11, third and 11. That time Jackson was set in motion, and he cut back. He was going in motion from right to left and cut back to his right as he received the ball. However, there was no room there as uh, the Northview Cougars did a good job of staying at home. Alan Brogdon, the other guard, in on there. 
course, McCall, a right tackle. Got to get a little bit better block up front. Third down and 10 for the Tigers. Huge right here because we need a first down. Keep the clock going and the chains moving and the ball in our possession. Under four minutes to go in the third period. 10-7 ball game. Brenson with the clock going down. He's not going to get it. And they called time. Did he get the timeout? They had the flag over here. Yep, he got the timeout called in time. The flag was thrown, however, uh, alertly. Philip Thomas calls timeout. He gets the timeout as the cl play clock went down to zero. That was close right there. It was very close. In fact, the, uh, uh, what, what is he, the backfield judge? What, the back judge, judge back the here flag? already pulled his flag out. And, uh, you know, they have their little meeting there and talk. And he said, yeah, he was giving the timeout. That's what more than likely that conversation is about right there. When you're out on the field calling, you wear the little black hat or the little white hat? Well, uh, <laughs> you got to be the referee to wear the white hat. Okay. okay. you got to make all those signals. And, uh, and that's something else. Let's, let's talk about that, the officials. Now, do you always call in the same spot or do you, uh, do you lose officials? Okay. Most of the time, this crew has been working together all season long. And really, even before that, uh, the head of the Dothan, officials association the meetings start back in july and uh you know we've had brother john on that does the clock but those rules are studied and and basically this crew is together for every game that they okay, do third have. third and 11 situation for the dolphin eye tigers pass on the right flat going to the dolphin eye tigers getting it across the 30 25 yard line all the way down to the 30 be caught short of a first down pass over there on the right flat at the receiving end i believe Looks Zarek, like Zarek Thomas. Zarek Thomas got Thomas. the ball, and I'll tell you what, welcoming him to the football game, Jeremy Thomas, with some help from several Cougar defenders, just leveled him there. But again, Zarek Thomas really pushed that play, got a lot of extra second effort yardage there, and came real close within two yards of picking up the 10 necessary for okay. the first down. On a fourth down situation, fourth and two, Lashley in the punt for the second time in this half. Is mild rush put on by the Northview Cougars. This is a good punt. It's going to take a nice bounce, a neutral bounce now outside the 15-yard line at the 17-yard line. Another good punt on the par. I've got 33 at this end. What was it that end? That's close to being 55 yards on that one. And most of that was in the air. And when it hit the ground, it took a hard lift. Yep. We'd rather see it bounce down there around the five, but they just basically outkicked everybody on the field going back for Northview, trying to do something with it. But it, uh, Meredith, Mason Meredith, it looked like he was trying to run it down, but uh, that was over the shoulder catching that football is tough. Lashley doing a fine job punting this year for the Dolphin High Tigers. First and 10 for the Northview Cougars outside their own 15 yard line, 2.44 to go. Dothan leading the Northview Cougars, 10 to seven. Gil Anthony along with Mike Hutto as McCoy hands off to Justin Brooks. Brooks with his second and third effort running gets it across the 20 to the 22 yard line. Good, good hard running by the sophomore running back for the Northview Cougars at about a five yard pickup. And again, finding it tough to run in between the two guards. That play designed to run a little bit wider and as a result, Brooks is able to get started up field, pick up the better part of the five yards, and really making the last two just on his second effort that time. Second and five, coming over here to the near side, they break the huddle, Anthony Spann. Pew, along with Justin Brooks in the backfield, wing to the left side. That, of course, would be a Gerald Black. Caleb McCoy, the quarterback. Oh, had quick movement over there on the left side. McCoy on the keeper play, tries to turn the left side. He gets it very close to the first down. Saw someone over here on the right side of the offensive line. Looked like they might have moved a little bit, uh, but uh, they got away with it. When you get away with it, uh, no flag down, and looks like where they're setting it down, they're going to call another timeout. Will the official to measure yep. just to see? Official called timeout for the measurement here. Coming with 144 to go in the uh, third period in this 10 to 7 ball game. Right now, the big INT by Fred Foster looms very big. That looks like it might have been good enough for a first down. It is. Spotted the ball, you got a fresh four for the Northview Cougars here at 144 in the third period. Maybe by the nose of the football, but it's good enough. They start out from their own 17 yard line. Now have it at the 27 yard line. Wing to the left side is Black. Pew, along with Justin Brooks in the backfield. First and 10 for the Northview Cougars trailing 10 to seven. This time handoff to Brooks. Brooks finds running room. He found a big, big hole across the 30, 35 yard line. And a big, big pickup of about eight yards on the part of Justin Brooks. At that time it opened up over right guard. Brooks knows what to do with it when he sees that daylight, Gill, and he runs as hard as anybody we've seen all year. Second and a short two situation for the Northview Cougars. 
The snap is made, will be about 60 seconds to play in this third period. Brooks again with the pew in the backfield. And a wing tee, wing to the right side, to the left side. Handoff again, going to Brooks. Brooks is stopped at the, at the line of scrimmage. That's it. He got nowhere. That's still bring up a third down in short yardage situation. Third and two. Reeves and Underwood just getting good penetration that time, not letting him get started up the field. And as a result, they're, well, basically lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. 15 seconds difference between the play clock and the, uh, the uh, clock on the scoreboard. 32 seconds and the clock moving time left in the third period. Third down and short yardage situation. Third and two at the 35 yard line for the Northview Cougars. McCoy over center. Over Shipes. Hands off again to Brooks. Brooks, he has stopped on his first surge. His second surge, he didn't get at that time either. He's going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage. That'll bring up the fourth down situation. And that should be the uh, final play of the uh, third period. Well, we've got final 12 left of regulation play, and that's coming up right after this 30-second timeout. The final 12 minutes of regulation by a score of 10 to 7. It's a fourth down, fourth and short situation for the Northview Cougars. Derek Flowers into the ball game. He'll be punting from outside his own 20-yard line. Line of scrimmage is the 35-yard line. Eric Thomas is the lone back for the North and High Tigers. Waiting. On the long count, there's the snap. It's a good snap. Three-man rush put on by the North Nine Tigers. And over and it's going to be fielded by Thomas. Thomas gets it at his 37-yard line, gets it across the 40 to the 42-yard line. So with the uh, no fair catch situation, he gained five yards on the play and puts Dothan five yards closer at the uh, just outside the 41-yard line, first and 10 for the Dothan Nine Tigers. And that's very good field position for any offense. Uh, again, the game, the kicking game has loomed large tonight, and you can thank John, uh, Lashley for his good job in kicking the football. And as a result, Dothan has the ball first and 10 as Northview calls timeout here with 11.49 left in the fourth quarter. Yeah, regulation Blaine will be back in 30 seconds. Eleven forty-nine to go in regulation play. I tell you what, I just checked your time. I'll tell you, this is a fast-moving ball game here. Very little as far as the air is concerned. So when you got a running ball game, the clock keeps going. First and, and ten for the Dolphin Eye Tigers outside their own forty-yard line. You got Willie Jackson in the backfield, double wing formation for Brenson and the Dolphin Eye Tigers. Send Eric Thomas in motion, going right up the middle to Willie Jackson. Jackson in Northview territory at the forty-five-yard line, down inside the forty to the thirty-seven-yard line. Works first and ten for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. Willie Jackson busting through on a good fake a handoff to Zarek Thomas and a couple of men bit and right up the middle goes Willie Jackson. He gets it all the way to the Northview 35 yard line. And Willie Jackson is fumbling the ball as he gets to the line of scrimmage but the fake, the linebacker step out, open up the daylight and I tell you what, I couldn't pick up the Northview defender but if he doesn't hustle back there, Willie Jackson takes that one to the house. Okay, the Dolphin Eye Tigers have it first and 10 from the uh, 39, 38 yard line. A couple of officials talking things over on the far side. Willie Jackson looks like he's favoring a hand. If you heard a hand, might have jammed a finger or two. Jackson in the backfield. Dury on the near side is a wide out. Parrish over on the far side. Double wings. Eric Thomas over here on the near side. Left wing is Philip Thomas. Sending Zarek Thomas in motion. Thomas trying to turn the corner on the far side. He got the ball, got the line of scrimmage. That's it. Is that Good flowers? read that time by the, North, uh, by the Northview Cougars. I believe that might have been Caleb McCoy over there on the far side. Anyway, did not pay attention to anything, doing reading what he's supposed to read, and put Zarek Thomas down at the line of scrimmage. Number 14, basically. Mason Meredith over there. He just stayed at home, and uh, Zarek Thomas, unable to turn the corner, got back to the original line of scrimmage. Second and ten situation. Double wing this time. Zarek Thomas, wing to the left side, to the right side. Going in motion is Philip Thomas. This time, a double reverse going to uh, Zarek Thomas. Thomas inside the 30, down to the 25. He spins his way down to the 20 yard line. First and 10 for the Dothan High Tigers, all the way down to the 20 yard line. That was a 17, 18 yard pickup on the part of Zarek Thomas on the double reverse. 
going inside. Zarek Thomas displaying his speed. Gets a big first down for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. It looks like Chris Parrish is favoring his right ankle there. Got Chris Got Parrish favoring his right ankle. I think uh, Willie Jackson was favoring one of his hands like he jammed a finger. He's still sort of doubling over, but uh, there's no way he wants to come out of that ball game. First and 10 for the Dolphin Eye Tigers at the 21 yard line, 10.23 to go. A big a touchdown would loom big right here for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. Double wing formation, Willie Jackson in the backfield. Sending Zarek Thomas in motion. Thomas, uh, Brenson on the keeper play. Brenson, his six foot three frame, spins across inside the 20 to about the 17 yard line. He's so long and lanky, yeah. it doesn't look like he's moving, but he's going to pick up the better part of four on the play. But alertly, some things that we didn't see Brunson doing early in the season, the, the snap or the handoff, somewhere we had a problem, and as a result, instead of panicking, he just lowered his head that time, Gil, made something good out of the broken play. Now it's second down and six. Second and six situation, a gain of four for the Dolphin Eye Tigers, nine and a half minutes to go in regulation play. Double wings, Eric Thomas in motion. Going up the middle and a quick handoff to Willie Jackson. Jackson gets it inside the 10 to the five, to the eight yard line. First and goal inside the 10 for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. That time again, he has the Northview Cougars leery of Zarek Thomas. Thomas really used as a decoy that time again, faking the handoff and giving it straight up the middle to Willie Jackson. Jackson found running room inside the 10 yard line where it's first and goal for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. Brogdon uh, on this side. Uh, at guard and of course McCall doing the blocking with Trent Smith on the right side they're running inside the right tackle and they're just making some huge holes there for Willie Jackson first and goal first and goal 909 to go for the Dolphin Eye Tigers leading 10 to 7 this time a handoff again on a reverse going to Zarek Thomas Thomas gets away from one tackler spins away inside the 10 down to the, about the eight yard line he almost got caught behind the line of scrimmage. His speed and the quickness of his feet got away from the Northview Cougars, spun it to the uh, eight-yard line. It'll be a second and goal from the eight. And the Dothan Tigers need the touchdown right here. That's right, because three really doesn't do you much good. Three it's still only uh, by it, six. That's a more and when you get a victory. And you can also get a free play just like we had, the INT by Fred Foster, and all of a sudden you find yourself down. That big change. And need to hustle up with eight seconds. Second and goal from the eight-yard line. Brenson needs to get the snap here real quick. He's going to get it. Oh, he got it just in. No. Did he get it? I don't know. No, he didn't. Yep, the flags are not. down. That looked like they down. had that one at zero. And that's just a huge mistake by the Tigers there. Another mental mistake <coughs> by the Dothan Eye Tigers. Cost him five. Delay of game. I mean, there's, it was really sometimes, Coach, I don't think there's an excuse for it. I mean, you're looking right at the play clock. The play clock is, is right, smack is dab in right front behind of the goal post on both ends, and they're in a no-huddle offense, and the uh, offensive line are up there at the line of scrimmage. The signal comes in from the sideline. Offensive coach, Coach Golden over there now talking to Brunson what they need to run. And, of course, instead of second down and eight, second it's and second goal from down the 12. 12, 13 yard line. Second and goal from the 12 yard line for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. Brenson changing the call at the line of scrimmage. Brenson this time, here goes the pitch out to Willie Jackson. Got Jackson's gonna lay it out there. Look out, he loves the interception. The Pew, the Quad Pew has them all at the 10, the 15. Down the 18 yard line, Willie Jackson will bring him down. There you go, what, what did I tell you? That's the kind of play when you're trailing the flag is over, flag there, is over there on the far side of the field is down. And the way oh, the, it's against Dothan. The way they're saying they're going to decline it. Northview says they're going to decline it. Initially, they, Northview thinks it's against the Dothan Eye Tigers. Holding the call against Dothan. That one was just underthrown. We had somebody in the end zone open, just did not get the ball over. And coming up with the interception, was that Pew or was that Bats? Two or seven. I thought it was two. I'm not sure. But I thought it was number two. It might have been seven. Anyway, turnovers anyway, nonetheless, have been huge yeah, the Northview Cougars game. have the ball at First their 21 the yard 20. line with 7.51 to go in regulation play. Again, we told you, just like the INT by Fred Foster, Northview comes up with the INT. 
And look out, just a couple of people, and he's running loose all the way downfield. Caleb McCoy hands off to Pew. Pew finds running room across the 20 to the 24-yard line where he has stopped after about a four-yard pickup. Here's where you've got to watch emotions. <laughs> you've got to play under control because you do not want a penalty. Both times we've had costly 15-yarders, they have cost us. And you really want to play under control here. And, you, you, and again, you're looking at a different situation. If the 15-yard penalty doesn't take you out of field goal range, uh, and it's good, the 13 to 10 lead. When you kick another one at 16 to 10, you're up the touchdown that you need right there. And the play calling maybe would have been different. Second and five, second and six situation. Here's handoff again going to Justin Brooks. Brooks wiggles his way up to the 30 yard line. He'll be short of a first down. You gotta lock up a lot better than on that young man because he got hit there and basically just second effort put another three yards, two and a half, three yards on that run. And as a result, it's gonna be third down now and about one third four and one at 6.51 to go in regulation. 10-7 ball game in favor of the Dolphin High Tigers. Dolphin coming up with their only touchdown on an INT by Fred Foster. Far out to the right side is Dylan Ward. Over here on the near side, the wing to the near side is black. You got Pugh, Justin Brooks in the backfield. Handoff going to Brooks. Brooks, is he going to get the first down? It looks like he got the first down. He gets it across the 30 to the 31 yard line. That's good enough for a fresh four at 622, and the clock continues to move. Yeah, first down for the Northview Cougars. Dolphins defense has got to stop him here in this series right here. We can't allow another first down. And that changes field position much too drastic. That's right, 30 from the 31 yard line for the Northview Cougars. And of course, as that clock starts to tick down, uh, Northview might be in four down territory right now where the ball is. From the 31 yard line. And on the option play, look out, there's a fumble. There's a fumble and hit the helmet. And it is picked up by the Dolphin High Tigers. As Eric Thomas comes yep. out of there with it. And it hit the helmet of Laquan Pugh on the option play. Caleb McCoy pinched it out. It looked like and it, it right just hit right his hands. hands and right, I think it maybe the pitch out was a little too high right in his, in his uh, vision. And it bounced off. And it's going to be Dolphin's ball inside the 35 yard and line. And this has been a game of turnovers right here that. I don't guess I've seen this many turnovers in a Dothan Northview game. Uh, we're probably going to maybe set the record tonight. Okay, 5.56 to go in regulation. Dothan takes over from the Northview 34 yard line. We've got to stop uh, turning it over. And a double wing formation. Eric Thomas goes in motion. Hand off to Willie Jackson. Jackson again up the middle inside the 30 yard line. Picks up about seven on the play. He gets all the way down to the 28 yard line. Just a good push again by the right side. Over there, uh, Brogdon, Smith, and McCall. They're sending Zary Thomas from right to left in motion, making the sweep play or downhill sweep, whatever you want to call it, to him. And then they're turning and give it to the lone setback who's finding some good yards over the right side. That was a gain of six on the play, second and four, 527 o'clock moving. Dothan has the ball inside the Northview 30-yard line. Handoff again, this time left side to Willie Jackson. Jackson, second effort. He stays on his feet. A la Ricky Williams gets to the 20-yard line, first down. And as a result of that, I mean, just second effort that time as Willie Jackson was going down, you practice on that balance drill. He did get that right hand down to the ground. And basically on all three, he's picked up another four yards, good enough for a huge first down. At the 20 yard line, first and 10 for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. We've got to keep the ball to ourselves. We're under five minutes to go. When the snap is made, 13 seconds, 12 on the play clock. 4.55, clock moving, time left in regulation. Brenson over centers. Eric Thomas goes in motion. Thomas is tied really to Willie Jackson. Jackson going, going into the end zone. Touchdown, Dothan. A 21-yard run by Willie Jackson at the 444 mark of regulation. And that time, Willie Jackson got into daylight, broke it into the end zone from about 20 yards out, and a huge sigh of relief from the far side as the Dothan Tigers go up 16-7 here against Northview. They want to go up 17 to seven, and of course that means two scores for the Northview Cougars. At the 444 mark of regulation, that time they've been doing it and doing it, and of course Northview Cougars respecting Zarek Thomas, always staying at home that time. A handoff again going to Willie Jackson. There's a point after attempt. Uh, Drew Johnson is good. So at 444 left in regulation, the scoreboard reads Dothan 17. Northview 7. We'll be back in 30 seconds. 
And a big turnover by the Northview Cougars, giving the ball to the Dothanine Tigers inside the Northview 35-yard line. And it was a 21-yard run by Willie Jackson into the end zone. That's got to be Jackson's biggest touchdown of the year in a Dothanine uniform. Uh, maybe one of his biggest touchdowns right. ever in a Dothanine uniform. Again, the play comes off the fake. Does Eric Thomas running the downhill sweep after he goes in motion? And Willie Jackson that time just broke it clear. Good blocking across the front line that time. Goes in untouched, and again, not only a huge sigh of relief, but a standing ovation as the Tiger offense comes off the field. Well-deserved, Gil, because the offense finally gets on the board after the defensive score, and of course, as you said, that makes it a two-score two game, but still, when you see all those forwards up there, I'll plenty of time left. I'll tell you what else has made a difference tonight. The defense has not been on the field as, nor as long as they normally are. Normally, they're worn down this time of the ball game. This one is end over end. It's a line drive. Look out. It's going to be in back in the end zone. It's going to be a touchback. Bring it on to the 20-yard line. That has also played a factor for the Dothan Eye Tigers. The offense has been able to get something going and mount something. It's keeping the defense on the sidelines because, uh, you know, there are some games where the defense probably has played close to 60 to 70 percent of the time. And that's, that's huge when you get down there and have to chase them. Of course, this fall has been one of those falls that the temperature had not dropped real far yet. But again, Drew Johnson comes up with a huge kick right there. It doesn't kick it into the end zone the air, but splits the Northview uh, defenders back there, the return team. When it goes in the end zone, first and 10 on the 20, and Northview's a little bit slow getting there. They play. are. They've got the clock, play clock down around 8, 7. Caleb McCoy in double wing formation. Jeremy Thomas on the near side, along with Gerald Black. This guy goes up the middle, Justin Brooks. Brooks keeps his balance. The ball is popped loose. It's going to be recovered by the Dolphin High Tigers at the 35-yard line, down Thomas. to the 30, down to the 25. Down Just to going out, running to the end zone. Five, touchdown, Dolphin. Zarek Thomas, there's a, no flags on the play. Oh, there's there's one flag on the play at the five-yard line. But I believe that's going to... against Northview. Yeah, that's the way they showed it, right? I think they pointed to Dothan High. Well, they pointed it this way. They pointed this way is the way the official pointed. Yeah, that would be a Dothan. At the five, five-yard line. So a fumble picked up by Zarek Thomas at the 35-yard line. And that was a block that should not have been thrown because the ball's in the end zone right there. That's, that's one of those... Yep, clip against the Dothan Eye Tigers. And you will, if the ball is in the end zone, it's a touchdown. What are we doing here? Uh, evidently it wasn't. It was not in the uh, end zone. It's going to be a first down for the Dothan Eye Tigers at back the 21-yard yard line. So Zarek Thomas coming up with the fumble recovery at 429 to go in regulation. Ran it into the end zone. However, it was nullified by a clip call, 17-7 to seven the score, Dothan leading, has the ball at the 21-yard line. And you know, though I know that was called back, but it's nice to see the ball bouncing our way. Well, uh, after not having yeah. hardly any breaks at all, we've had well above our share. To Double even wing formation for the Dothan Nine Tigers. Eric Thomas going in motion. Willie Jackson gets the handoff on the left side of the offensive line, gets inside the Northview 20-yard line. He has stopped at about the 18-yard line. Three-yard pickup by the Dothan Eye Tigers. And now Dothan in no hurry to get any play in with 4-10 and counting. Better you know, lock it up and keep both hands on there because Northview right. will be trying to strip it. You know, we don't want to worry too much about extending the time because we've come close to uh, running the time down without having to try and run the clock down on purpose. Double wing. Zarek Thomas over here on the near side. Far side, Philip Thomas. Willie Jackson. In the backfield, Brenson gets the snap, hands off to Willie Jackson. Jackson at the 15-yard line. 17-7 to seven ball game, 341, clock moving, time left in regulation. And now you want that clock to be close to zero. Yep. The play clock in the end zone to yeah, we show don't you be zero. Too close to zero. zero. We're going to take some snaps. Third and four situation. Scott Owens far out to the uh, left side. Double wing. Brenson over center. Offensive line has done a good job tonight for the Dothan High Tigers. 
going in motion on a double reverse this time Zarek Thomas Thomas tries to find some running room he has stopped the line of scrimmage at the 15 just inside the 15 yard line that's going to bring up a fourth down situation with under three minutes to go and coming into the ball game it'll be Johnson attempting uh, what should be about a 25 32 yard field goal and maybe at about 31 32 yards Northview calls timeout 245 to go in regulation we've got a 17 to 7 ball game we'll keep it right here the Dolphin Line Tigers of course closing out their regular season next Thursday night here at Ripview Stadium against Juvala and of course the offense coming up huge tonight when we needed it they got the drive and got the points which we haven't had a whole lot of this year but again you have to look out there 10th grade quarterback showing some maturity uh, just like on the bad play when instead of panicking and, and you see those happy feet when they start dancing but without even thinking about it now he turned it into about a four yard game uh, you can't do things like that in practice Gil and uh, the turnovers that we've seen tonight the ball is bounced in favor of the Dothan Tigers and it shows up on the scoreboard with a 10 point lead and the Dothan Tigers looks like they're about two minutes and 45 seconds away from their fifth straight win against the Northview Cougars last time they lost was 1999 they're at 15 to 12 ball game last year right now we're sitting at 17 to 7 Drew Johnson will attempt a 32 yard field goal Scott Owen snapping it back Brody holding there's a snap there is a hold and oh it hits the goal post bounces off to the uh, left side it is no good hooked it just a little bit too much from right to left and hit the goal post and bounced outside well we didn't get the bounce on that one nope but i just wonder how many times you could kick it from there and still hit that and post hit the goal post, post another right. 10 times you could sit there probably until your foot got real tired um Maybe a yard, what, four yards maybe on the play now. Northview's 80 yards away, still needing 10 points. But you can't relax. You Don't cannot. relax. 2.38 to go in regulation. 17-7 ball game in favor of the Dolphin Eye Tigers. Caleb McCoy. McCoy decides, nope, he's going to keep it as he can't go to the air and find anybody. Spins away outside the 25 to the 27-yard line. Keep that clock moving. That time he wanted to go to the air. Coverage over there on the far side. Reeves and Graham come up. We'll let him run around as long as he's running left and right. Uh, coming in, Zarek Thomas goes out for a break, and really, Zarek Thomas has played offensive, defensive, the majority of the snaps. Okay. Ryan Barnes, senior cornerback, coming in to give him a break. Second and the long two. Second and about three for Caleb McCoy. McCoy drops back the pass, incomplete, leading uh, number 37, Daniel Flowers, a little bit too much. i tell you what, he had the right beam on it, but... Uh, Oh, I'll let him just a little bit too much. The ball's too incomplete and stops at 201. That ball didn't quite get up enough in the air, just trying to hit a deep post pattern. Ball falls to the ground incomplete, third down now and three. And Northview needs to remember they need first downs as well here. They can't go, you know, just give give it all up still with two minutes, one second left. Span breaks huddle over the far side. Pews in the backfield with Justin Brooks. You're right, they need the first down here on a third and short three situation at the 201 mark. And off going to Justin Brooks. Brooks got the first down. He gets it across the 30 to the 32 yard line. Brooks has enjoyed a fine night. The sophomore running back for the North Beach Cougars has done a fine job. And again, like I said, he runs as hard as anybody we've seen all year. And the last fumble, well, we've said it how many times, that second, third effort, when you're twisting and turning, the ball pops out, and that's exactly what happened to the Northview Cougars. Dothan Eye Tigers looks as if they're going to win their second ball game of the year. 144 in the clock moving. Time left in regulation. Time left in the ball game. 17 to 7. McCoy on a fake bootleg drops back. He rolls it out. The pass is going to be intercepted. Nope. Falls off the uh, fingertips of uh, Ontrell Adams. Adams had it all alone, just popped it around. In the backfield, he was all alone. Went off his fingertips not once but twice and falls incomplete at 134 to go. That time McCoy just overshot the receiver doing the post to the middle of the field and hit it hit Adams in a bad spot right in the hands. Yep. Down the Adams line. sort of playing center field there, just uh, watching his territory. On a second and ten at the 32-yard line. Ten seconds on the play clock. This time on a halfback option, laying Got him it wide out there open. incomplete. And that was Jarrah Black. Black 
On the far side, the intended receiver was Anthony Spann. He had him, Spann was all alone. The ball was just overthrown. And the clock stops at 128. Halfback pass that time. Uh, the would-be receiver for Northview just got 10 yards behind everybody. And I believe the pass black from black Falls harmlessly to the ground, overthrown. Dylan Ward this time wide out to the right side on a third and 10 situation for McCoy. McCoy hands off to Pugh. Pugh finds running room at the 35 yard line, still on his feet at the 37. He'll be stopped right there, fourth down situation. Fourth down and Cougars. long. At 114, 113, clock moving. Fourth and about five. No need to put it away here. Ward will go wide out to Daniel Flowers, wide out to the right side. Pugh and Justin Brooks in the backfield, wing to the left. There's Gerald Black. McCoy is the quarterback. McCoy makes the handoff this time. He rolls to his left. The pass is incomplete. And the clock stops at 45 seconds remaining. At look time, that time the receiver didn't finish off his pattern and continue dragging across the middle, trying to hit the tight end open. But that ball just overthrown into a gap where nobody was. And with 45 seconds left, you can take a couple of snaps and put this in the W column. That's right. It will be the second win of the year for the Delta Nine Tigers. Two and seven on the year, equaling their win production last year. As they were two and seven. Winning last year over the Northview Cougars by a 15 to 12 margin. 17 to seven here. Looks like the, the plan Branson is just going to take a knee. Tell the officials we're going to yep. take it and kill it. Start the clock. He takes the knee. 43 seconds clock. Winding and, and down. People will wonder why why are, are not the Northview defenders coming across and dislodge the ball. The officials have already been alerted that we're going to take it on the knee, and so any roughing or anything like that turns into unsportsmanlike play. Uh, when they tell you that, There's and so, again, if it's a five, fumble or something, you got it. Five second difference between the play clock and the uh, clock on the scoreboard. This will be the last play right here. Brenson takes the knee, and that's going to be it. The Dolphin Eye Tigers win their second game of the year in a big victory over the uh, Northview Cougars. The Northview Cougars go down in a tough one, but they left it out on the field, Coach. 17 to 7. They have nothing to put their heads down about because they played a tough one and it was just the ball bouncing the right way for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. Well, uh, as you've been talking to the coaches, basically it's a repeat of the same thing that uh, the Northview coaches said over and over again. Uh, mistakes, mistakes, mistakes. And as a result, when you turn it over the ground, Coach Bowers' team. 17 uh, One thing to you seven. see right there that you're proud to see. It makes you proud to be a Cougar fan, makes you proud to be a Dolphin High fan. The uh, team's lining up and just uh, shaking hands as they go across the field. And everybody in the stands on their feet uh, with an ovation. Because that, again, like you said, that all you can ask them is improve and get better. This team from Northview better than what we did see last year, in my opinion. You've got some young talent with Brooks. As we said, runs the ball as hard as anybody, but you know, you take away the mistakes, one, uh, one three-point, uh, the field goal, the interception, the game could be still seven to three. Okay, the final score here at Ripview Stadium, 17-7, the Dolphin Eye Tigers defeat the Northview Cougars. We'll be back to wrap it up in two minutes. <laughs> 